Okay, so I'm going to just go through the uh, bail bearing program and the settings and show how to adjust them and why, why they're there. So first, first setting we have, if you're at the home screen, bail bearing manual mode, um, you, know, you select left, you can actually change the language. I'm going to keep it in English. Um, if you hit escape, you go back to the main screen. From the main screen, if you go to the right, you hit it one time. You have New Holland mode or Heston mode. To change from New Holland to Heston, modify, hit the up arrow, hit enter, and now you've cha changed the value to one. One equals Heston. If we change it back to New Holland, modify, down arrow, enter, zero equals New Holland or value zero. The difference between the New Holland mode and the Heston mode is when the end gate's closed through the auto, auto cycle. So if it's in Heston mode, it waits till there's 21 bales in the chamber, the end gate's closed, then the plunger compresses and it ties. If it's in New Holland mode, the end gate's closed after 18 bales, and then it puts another three bales in, compresses and ties. The reason for that, Heston bales are a little bit taller than New Holland bales. So if you close the end gates after 18 bales in Heston mode, it'll actually push the entire pack forward and it'll restrict the last three bales from going in. So that's the only difference is when the end gates close between New Holland or Heston. Moving on, press the right arrow button one more time. We get to 14 inch or 16 inch bale mode. Um, most balers produce 14 inch bales. So that's the default setting. Um, if, you ch if you choose the 16 inch bale mode, so we'll go modify, we'll hit up, we'll hit enter. It'll automatically default to 18 bales per bundle. The reason for that is uh, it makes the same size pack as a 21 bale pack if it's 14 inch bales as a 16 inch bale pack, 18 bale per bundle pack. Um, if you do ch choose 16 inch bale mode, there's some uh, hardware you have to change in the injector area. Um, we detail that in, in great depth in the uh, owner's manual. I won't get into it right now. So we'll just go back here, modify, down, enter, 14 inch bales. Then it goes to the next screen is 21 bales per bundle. Moving along here to the right, we can change that. Um, default is 21 bales per bundle. If you want to change it, is only if you have the correct hardware. So if we hit modify, we hit right, or sorry, up. 12 bales per bundle. If we hit enter, 12 bales per bundle, you require different end gates. But if you have those end gates and you want to change it to 12 bales per bundle, that's how you do it. We're going to change it back to 21 bales per bundle. And it, it all depends on what size bales you're doing and what hardware is with the machine when you change bales per bundle. Um, moving along, a clear chamber before proceeding. You'll see that command message if you change from 14 inch bale bundles to 16 inch bale bundles or if you change quantity of bales per bundle due to, uh, it's just basically a cautionary um, command message saying now we've gone to a different size pack, so the end gates could close on an existing pack, messing up that pack. So it's just telling you to clean out all the hay and then continue bailing. So we'll just hit escape to clear that mode. Again, going back through here, we put this in Heston or in New Holland, 14 inch bales, 21 bales per bundle. The mistile arm, you can either choose to have it on or off. Default is on, obviously. Um, the reason for turning it off would be if you have a mistile arm that's prevalent and you can't fix it, you could choose to tie with three strings and shut the mistile arm on until you have a more convenient time to uh, fix the otter. Or if you're getting a false alarm and you can't fix it, you don't have the time, rain's coming, you can shut it off. Again, modify, press up, enter. It's gonna tell you it's deactivated and it, if you actually want to deactivate it, you press enter, accept. It defaults back to the home screen, but the mistile arm is actually off. We'll back through here. We'll turn it back on. Oh, went too far. If you hit the left arrow, you'll go back. Modify, down, enter. Go, moving along, um, hydraulic oil supply, minus or plus 27 gallons per minute. If you're hooked onto a uh, pump that puts out more than 27 gallons per minute, you're gonna wanna select plus 27 gallons per minute. So modify, up, enter. 
The reason for that is it, it speeds up the tie cycle a little bit by opening the end gates as it's tying. The, the caution with this mode would be if you select plus 27 gallons per minute and your track is only putting out 25 gallons per minute, your end gates are going to open through the tie cycle, but you're not going to have enough oil to supply all that um, operation. So you might uh, actually slow down the machine. Also, you can have missed tying issues from that. If, uh, if you're not more than 27 gallons per minute and the end gates start opening, before the first knot is complete, then uh, the bundle will shift and the twine will actually cause a missed tie. So know what tractor you're on, know how much hydraulics you have before you choose plus 27 gallons per minute. Uh, if you're not sure, the uh, default is definitely minus 27 gallons per minute because if you have it on minus 27 gallons per minute mode but you're actually putting more oil to it, it won't hurt anything. It'll work like normal. If we hit right AO again, we're back at the home screen. Um, that basically covers any program settings we have. Um, another thing from the home screen, if you hit modify, we get into our stack counts. This is very critical information. Uh, if you move something in manual, and you insert a bale manually into the machine, the computer doesn't recognize it. So let's say we manually move the injector up and we insert a bale manually, our stack count didn't change, although we've put one bale up. So if you do that, um, you can actually look in the side of the machine and see how many are in the vertical stack. In this case, we did one, so we will actually just hit the one, one up arrow. We'll change that value to one, and then we can return to auto mode. Auto mode will engage and it will carry on as normal. Uh, the second one is horizontal stack count. If you were to move a, pa a stack of three, um, it's going to be the same. I'll just demonstrate it here. Put the injector up, move the plunger in. It, it didn't change the value because you're in manual mode. In auto mode, it automatically keeps track of what the stack counts are at. So if we did that, we'd have to up the horizontal stack count to one. If you had four horizontal stack counts in there and you put another one in, up it to five. It just depends on how many are in there. And that's crucial because if you have that um, stack count wrong, it, let's say the machine thinks you have uh, six vertical stack or horizontal stacks in there and you really have seven horizontal stacks in, it'll make a bundle with eight horizontal stacks and that's 24 bales and you won't be able to compress that hay and you'll, you'll end up with uh, a problem. So it's, it, again, it's crucial if you move something in manual, always make sure your horizontal and vertical stack count is correct and uh, you'll avoid problems. Um, moving on, hitting the right arrow, we get to a resettable counter. If it's any, any value from 10, 1, uh, 100,000, if you hit modify, it will zero out. And that'd be a field to field counter. Moving along here, Resettable service counter, it's resettable. If you move one more total counter, this one you can't modify. It'll tell you what life the uh, machine is at. This one's at zero because we're working on a brand new machine here today. Moving along, program version, that's more for uh, a service technician or, or the, the uh, manufacturer. Uh, nothing, you can't change anything with that. It's more just for information. Uh, and that's all 